Today, I have two DI boxes from Radial Engineering in front of me, one active, one passive. Up until recently, I hadn't really thought about why you'd use one or the other, but Music School covers more than just making noise, but also how the electronics help us make noise. So I'd like to share some of that knowledge I've acquired for free here on the internet. That being said, nothing is truly free, so thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video and sending me two DI boxes to dissect for my audience. You'll find my affiliate link in the description, which directly supports the channel and helps keep the lights on. DI boxes, or direct injection boxes, take a high impedance, unbalanced signal and convert it to a low impedance, balanced signal. They typically do this using a transformer in passive DI boxes, and active DI boxes use op amps and line drivers, sometimes alongside transformers. This greatly reduces the amount of electromagnetic interference that enters the signal, and if most of that sounded like gibberish to you, I'll link to some informational videos in the description that do a much better job explaining those concepts. I'm a music major, not an electrical engineer. However, I do try my best. In this video, we're going to compare these two boxes side by side and take them apart to see how their circuitry differs as well. We can actually listen to the electromagnetic interference that the DI box is helping reject using this EMF pickup I made by ripping a transformer out of an old power supply and soldering an audio jack to it. Don't do this at home, by the way. Those capacitors can release enough energy to do some serious damage. Putting the pickup on this light, we can hear the sound of the electronics inside screaming away. Most electronics emit EMF and can infiltrate your unbalanced audio signals. And although these sounds are pretty cool, it's not ideal when you're shredding on your guitar. Now that we know what that sounds like, let's take a look at the outside of these DI boxes before we see them from the inside. Let's start with the passive DI. With my razor blade, I can verify that all sides are made from metal, steel to be exact. And if you're a fan of jerry-rig everything, you might feel at home during this part. The green enamel coating comes off when I scratch it, pretty expected. The bottom of both DIs have a soft foam layer that'll prevent them from sliding around on the ground. There's also two screws that we'll take a closer look at later, if you catch my drift. After heavily scratching some of the text with my razor blade, we can see it's still pretty readable. Love to see that. All the buttons are made from plastic, and we have two pad enable buttons for their respective channels, since this is a stereo DI, and we have two inputs with throughput capability. Flipping it around, we have a shared ground lift button for both channels with two XLR outs. This side is still made from metal. Now let's take a look at the active DI and see how they differ. The output side is identical with a shared ground and two XLR outs. On the input side is where things are a little different. For starters, we have a shared 80 Hz high pass filter as well as a shared pad enable this time around, but still two quarter inch inputs and throughputs. Here they are side by side so we can see those differences, and we can also see that the output sides are in fact identical. Just making sure Radial didn't pull a quick one and change the material, but we can see the active DI is also made from metal. I'm not a visual artist by any stretch, however, I'll attempt to draw a little smiley face on the side and maybe brighten your day. Give this little guy a rating in the comments. 10 out of 10 in my books. I think we've seen enough of the outside. Let's remove these four screws and see what they look like on the inside. The internal electronics housing slides out very easily after those four screws are removed. And putting them side by side, we can already see some pretty major differences. For starters, the passive DI has these two circular transformers, one for each channel, which do most of the heavy lifting. They don't require any power, and the signal is magnetically coupled through the transformer to balance and lower the impedance. Pretty neat. Other than a couple of resistors and capacitors, there's not much else going on here with the circuitry. However, the same cannot be said for the active DI. Upon first examination, we can already see there's a lot more going on here. The active DI uses operational amplifiers instead of transformers, specifically the TL072 op amp, which are these little guys right here. Radial claims these op amps add minimal gain to the signal, however they maintain the signal quality and amplitude, so the passive DI will sound quieter due to losses in the passive circuitry. We also see a 7555 timer, which Radial is using in combination with capacitors to convert the 48 volts phantom power to a lower 15 volts for the op amps. We also see a lot more resistors and capacitors than the passive circuitry, as well as a tiny transformer and a few diodes. The transformer is not being used in the same way as it is in the passive DI. It's most likely for signal filtering of the phantom power in some way. And the diodes, I assume, are for reverse polarity protection, as well as rectification to convert the AC-like signal from the timer to DC so the circuit can use it. Again, I'll link to some videos that explain those concepts in more detail in the description. Looking at the back, it's pretty obvious how much more complex an active circuit is compared to a passive. The rule of thumb when deciding which type to choose is use an active DI for passive instruments like guitars and basses, and a passive DI for active instruments like keyboards, synths, or instruments with built-in preamps. 
That being said, active DI boxes typically add analog color to the sound you're feeding to it, which can be desirable or undesirable. Active DI boxes are also more expensive. I've had this little $30 Behringer Passive DI for the last six years, and it's held up insanely well. Certainly had a rough life. Last up today, I thought we could have a little listening session and compare the two DI boxes side by side with my passive guitar. Let's start with the passive DI. And now the active. I'll need to enable 48 volts phantom power for this one. Leave a comment down below if you hear the difference and which one you prefer. It's certainly subtle and I also gain matched them so there's a lot going on there. And that's all for today. I hope you learned something and I'm looking forward to making more videos like this. Let me know if you want to see anything else taken apart and analyzed and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.